hi guys welcome to my steady compass in this video i'll be walking you through the past paper mark b1 variant 3 may june 2022 let's get started write the number 103,806 in figures here is the number written in figures Measure the length of the line AB in millimeters. When we measure the length of AB, we get 86 millimeters. Mark the midpoint M of the line AB. On line AB, we mark point M, which is half of 86, that is 43 millimeters from either point A or point B. Draw a line through M that is perpendicular to the line AB. Using a protractor, we measure and mark an angle of 90 degrees at point M. Then we draw a straight line from the 90 degree mark passing through point M. Simplify 3x minus 4x plus 7x. 3 minus 4 plus 7 is 6. So we have 6x. Work out the area of a rectangle that is 9.5 meters long and 6.8 meters wide. Here is the formula for the area of a rectangle. The length L is 9.5 meters and the width W is 6.8 meters. This gives us 64.6 meters squared. The probability of picking a red sweet from a bag is 0.05. Find the probability of not picking a red sweet. The sum of the probabilities of picking a red sweet and not picking a red sweet must add up to 1. So to get the probability of not picking a red sweet, we subtract 0.05 from 1, which gives us 0.95. Measure the bearing of point B from point A. On the diagram, we've marked the bearing of point B from point A. Using a protractor, when we measure this angle, we get 142 degrees. Work out the value of mk cubed over square root of 3 when m is 4 and k is 7. When we plug in the values of m and k into the given expression, we have 4 times 7 cubed divided by square root of 3, which is equal to 792 rounded to 3 significant figures. A box in the shape of a cuboid has volume 357 centimeters cubed. It has a length of 8.5 centimeters and a width of 6 centimeters. Calculate the height of the box. Here is the formula for the volume of a cuboid. We want to find the height h of the cuboid. So when we make h the subject, this is what we have. V is 357 centimeters cubed. L is 8.5 centimeters and W is 6 centimeters. This gives us 7 centimeters. PQRS is a quadrilateral. RST is a straight line. Find angle PST. The sum of the angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. So to get angle PSR, we subtract the sum of 73, 129, and 75 from 360. This gives us 83 degrees. Angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So we have angle PST plus 83 equals 180. When we subtract 83 from both sides, we get angle PST equals 97 degrees. These are the masses in kilograms of 12 parcels. Complete the stem and leaf diagram for the 12 parcels. We've been given the key to be 0 stroke 3 represents 0 0.3 kilograms. For 0 0.3, the first number is 0. So we come to this line and write down the second number, which is 3. This has already been filled in for us. 
for 0 0.4, the first number is 0. So we come to this line and write down the second number, which is 4. This has also been filled in for us. For 1.2, the first number is 1. So we come to this line and write down the second number, which is 2. We need to repeat the same process for all the numbers. When we are done, we need to ensure that the numbers on each line are arranged in ascending order. Find the median. To get the position of the median, we use the formula half n plus 1, where n in this case is 12. This gives us 6.5. This means the median is between the 6th and 7th numbers. The number in the 6th position is 1.1 kg and the number in the 7th position is 1.2 kg. So the median is 1.1 plus 1.2 kg divided by 2 which is equal to 1.15 kg. The grid shows point P and point R. Write down the coordinate of point P. When we map P onto the x-axis, we get negative 1. And when we map it onto the y-axis, we get 4. So we have negative 1, 4. Vector PQ equals 3, negative 2. Mark point Q on the grid. Based on the given vector, to move from point P to point Q, we need to move 3 units to the right and 2 units downwards. After implementing this movement on the grid, we are able to mark the position of point Q. Find vector QR. On the grid, we see that to move from point Q to point R, we move 6 units to the left and 5 units downwards. So vector QR is negative 6, negative 5. Complete the statement. PQ plus QR equals blank. Moving from P to Q, then from Q to R, is the same as moving from P to R. Simplify y cubed divided by y raised to the power 5. Since the terms have the same base and they are dividing, their powers subtract. So we have y raised to the power 3 minus 5. 3 minus 5 is negative 2, so we have y raised to the power negative 2. Simplify 7x raised to the power 0 x raised to the power 0 is 1, so 7 times 1 gives us 7. The scatter diagram shows the number of visitors and the total amount spent in thousands of dollars at a zoo on each day of 8 days. On one of the 8 days, there are 410 visitors. Find the total amount spent by visitors during this day. On the grid, we see that on the day where there were 410 visitors, the total amount spent by the visitors was $27,000. Information for the ninth day is shown in the table. Plot this information on the scatter diagram. On the grid, we've plotted the point 175, 9. Draw a line of best fit on the scatter diagram. On the grid, we've drawn the line of best fit. The general rule of thumb for drawing a line of best fit is to ensure that it passes through as many points as possible while balancing an equal number of points above and below the line. On the 10th day, the total amount spent is $22,000. Estimate the number of visitors on this day. On the grid, when we map $22,000 from the vertical axis onto the line of best fit, we get the estimated number of visitors to be 325. Calculate the height h of the triangle. To get h, we apply the Pythagoras theorem. This gives us 5 squared equals h squared plus 2 squared. When we make h the subject, this is what we get. When we type this into the calculator, we get 
4.58 cm, rounded to three significant figures. The triangle is one face of a square based pyramid. On the 1 cm square grid, draw a net of this pyramid. First, we draw the square base, which has dimensions 4 cm by 4 cm. The base would be connected to the four triangular side faces with a base of 4 cm and a height of 4.58 cm. Factorize completely. 18px minus 27p. The terms have a common factor of 9p. When we factor out 9p, we are left with 2x minus 3. The nth term of a sequence is n squared minus 1. Find the first three terms of this sequence. For the first term, we plug in n equals 1 into the nth term. So we have 1 squared minus 1, which is equal to 0. For the second term, we have 2 squared minus 1, which is equal to 3. And for the third term, we have 3 squared minus 1, which is equal to 8. The diagram shows two right angle triangles, ABC and PQR. Complete this statement with a geometrical term. Triangle ABC is blank to triangle PQR. The two triangles satisfy the RHS criteria, which is right angle hypotenuse side so triangle abc is congruent to triangle pqr calculate angle abc to get angle abc we apply socatua to triangle abc this gives us cos of angle abc equals 7.3 centimeters divided by 9.2 centimeters when we make angle abc the subject this is what we get when we type this into the calculator we get 37.5 degrees rounded to one decimal place find the lowest common multiple of 32 and 40 First, we list the multiples of 32 and 40. From these lists, we see that the LCM of the two numbers is 160. Write this as an equation in terms of n and solve the equation. We are told, Joe thinks of a number n, trebles it and subtracts 5. The result is 22. So we have... 3n minus 5 equals 22. When we add 5 to both sides, we get 3n equals 27. And when we divide both sides by 3, we get n equals 9. Find the gradient of line L. First, we pick two points on line L. Then we apply the gradient formula. This gives us 0 minus negative 2 divided by negative 1 minus 0, which is equal to negative 2. Dominic asks 30 students in his class if they are right-handed or left-handed. 7 students are left-handed. Work out the expected number of left-handed students in the whole school of 960 students. If out of 30 people, 7 are left-handed, then we want to find the expected number of left-handed people in the school, which has 960 students. This is what we are calling x. When we cross-multiply and make x the subject, this is what we get, which is equal to 224. Without using a calculator, work out 4 1 over 6 minus 1 7 over 8. You must show all your working and give your answer as a mixed number in its simplest form. First, we need to convert the mixed fractions into improper fractions. So for 4 1 over 6, we have 6 times 4 plus 1, which is 25, divided by 6. And for 1 7 over 8, we have 8 times 1 plus 7, which is 15, divided by 8. 
The LCM of 6 and 8 is 24. For 25 over 6, since we multiply the denominator by 4 to get the LCM, then we also need to multiply the numerator by 4. So 25 times 4 gives us 100. For 15 over 8, since we multiply the denominator by 3 to get the LCM, then we also need to multiply the numerator by 3. So 15 times 3 gives us 45. 100 minus 45 gives us 55. 55 over 24 is an improper fraction, so we need to convert it into a mixed fraction. 24 goes into 55 two times with a remainder of 7, which we divide by 24. So we have 2 7 over 24. Solve the simultaneous equations. You must show all your work in. First, let's label the given equations. We will be using the elimination method. We want to eliminate y. So we multiply equation 1 by 2. This gives us 8x minus 6y equals 52, which we've labeled as equation 3. Now that we have minus 6y in equation 3 and 6y in equation 2, we can eliminate y by adding equation 2 to equation 3. This gives us 13x equals 65. When we divide both sides by 13, we get x equals 5. So now, we plug in the value of x into any of the equations to get the value of y. Let's pick equation 2. This gives us 5 times 5 plus 6y equals 13. 5 times 5 is 25. When we subtract 25 from both sides, we have 6y equals negative 12. And when we divide both sides by 6, we have y equals negative 2. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. See you in the next video. Bye guys.